Hello, I'm Ed Overstreet, and you are watching the Night Sky Imaging Astro Imaging Channel. And uh, today, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, go through a couple applications that I use uh, to help set up an imaging session. And uh, there's a number of things that uh, uh, resources on the internet that you can call on, but I have a couple that are my favorites, and so. Uh, Let's get started and get right over there. I'll share my screen and see if I can't find. Okay. Um, now I am coming to you on a Mac, an iMac, but uh, I am connected by Wi Fi to a uh, Windows laptop because this software is only, uh, is Windows only. And it's called uh, what's up and uh, it's uh, I'll take you to the website I'll put a link a the website is uh, rickastro.com and uh, r-i-c-k a-s-t-r-o dot com and uh, to get to the software at the top it's kind of difficult to see it says Astro Planning Software, click here, and if you click right there on that link, uh, then you can download What's Up. So uh, let's head back to What's Up. And here we go. Now, uh, what I like about this is that uh, I can uh, tailor this for my backyard, and it was even more important to me uh, where we used to live. Uh, five years ago, we downsized, and uh, in doing that, we moved to an area where I have a 360-degree view of the night sky, so I'm not nearly as uh, pinned in as I was where I used to live, and trees were, um, they were in our front and in our backyard, uh, fortunately, they weren't directly in front of the house, so I had a window uh, to the east, slightly southeast, and to the celestial north, and uh, maybe a little bit northwest, but I didn't have much room to image, and I also had to set up in my front yard, so I was actually uh, thrilled to death to have a backyard that I could uh, see the sky. But uh, this is uh, software that will help you to uh, uh, filter down through uh, uh, certain sets of parameters that you set for yourself. Now, you're going to have to begin by setting your location, and uh, you can manually type in your latitude and longitude, and that's what I would uh, recommend and update it. Uh, Right now, we're on Eastern Daylight Time, so it's minus four hours uh, from GMT if you're uh, uh, in the East Coast, which I am. And you'll want to enter the date that you're going to be imaging and the time you plan to start. And uh, it's uh, 24 hour clock, so if I wanted to start at, uh, say, uh, at 8 o'clock, I'll type in 20, and that's close enough. So I've got uh, 8 o'clock dialed in as my start. Let's say I want to be able to image for four hours, and uh, that's how long I hope I can image. So I want a target that's in the sky uh, in my neck of the woods that I'll be able to image. and. Uh, I can refresh the list continuously, but uh, I have a choice of just going after galaxies by unchecking everything else. And uh, tonight, for example, I may give it a go. Uh, and we have a thread of clouds coming and going, but I may try to give it a go. And I have two setups outside. I have uh, an eight inch uh, Smith Cassidy grain that I would do galaxy imaging with, and then I have a uh, 
a wide field stellar view 336 millimeter. So I might want to run this for each of the kits. In fact, I probably will. So uh, if I wanted to know what galaxies are going to be viewable at 8 o'clock that I'll be able to image for four hours, then uh, I just refresh the list and there they are. Now, if I want to filter by size, I can click on size and that's from small to large and click it again and that's from large to small. So M81, uh, the Bode's Nebula is uh, clearly at 44 degrees going to be a good target to uh, image. And uh, so are the other targets, 2403, 2903, etc. So I have a few options starting that early in the evening. Now, there's more to setting this criteria. You might want to set the minimum brightness based on your kit. Uh, I just added 40. I'll chase anything. Um, and you may want to have a minimum arc minute size. Um, you may not. I want an uh, image smaller than, say, uh, two, three, four, five, six arc, arc minutes, and this is where you enter that. And what is the minimum elevation uh, that you can start at in your uh, backyard or wherever you're going to be imaging? Is it, uh, do you have trees? Uh, or are you shooting over a heavily polluted area that would be a waste of time to shoot low in the sky? Or do you have some reasonably dark skies, which I do. So uh, I've got 27 degrees now. Granted, even with dark skies, the images that come in below 40 degrees are never as good as the images that come in above 40 degrees altitude. And that's just the nature of the thickness of the horizon uh, in terms of thermal issues, uh, heat bouncing off the Earth's surface, rooftops, and whatever else. And there is light. Uh, it may be the darker part of the city or the suburbs or the county, but there is light. And so the closer you are to Mother Earth, uh, more you're going to pick up the muckiness of that uh, pollution. It won't go away. Now, this is the uh, part that was very helpful for me because I knew that I could image from uh, 360 degrees to about 90 degrees, uh, maybe, mm, maybe 100 degrees. So if I put in a hundred degrees minimum and max a 360, then this will show you the area of the sky uh, that uh, I was able to image. And um, uh, you can uh, choose exclusive if you have no view of this and this is the area of the sky that you have to limit. So you can put your criteria in. And, uh, and of course, my list went down to 1, uh, NGC 50, 6, 1560. So I uh, may have to wait till later in the night before something comes into view. But I do have a uh, 0 to 360 uh, uh, opportunity. So... Um, I want to uh, take advantage of that and I'm going to put everything in here I can. And so if I include absolutely everything and uh, by that you have to in, and make sure you're exclusive, inclusive, including everything then uh, there's a multitude of targets that I can go after. And let's choose on size, because that's what's important to me. I know I've got some wide field opportunities. And so I'm going to be looking for some uh, areas that are uh, uh, going to give me some nice views, wide field views, and some targets maybe I haven't shot before. 
And uh, so I will then kind of make a mental note or write down uh, these targets. Um, let's say we're going right back to galaxies. And uh, so I'm interested in, uh, say, let's say NGC, do this again. And let's say we want to go to NGC 1560. And I'm not familiar with that. Uh, it's about 10 arc minutes. And uh, so I want to take a look at it. At 8 o'clock, it's going to be about 50 degrees. I like that. And so uh, let's, let's go see what that might look like. And I'm going to head over to, I hate that coming up. I'm going to go over to my planetarium. I already forgot what I was looking at. Let me go back. It's 1560. Okay, so we'll go back to my planetarium software. And I'm going to go up here and type in NG, N, can't spell NGC, 1560. And I also need to put 8 o'clock as my starting time. So NGC 1560, or 1560 p.m., please, um, is lost it already. NGC 1560. Okay, it's up here. I'm looking for it. Here it is. So um, let's see if it's uh, we got an image of it. Let me click on info. Nope. It just says this galaxy is a very faint ghostly streak associated with uh, whatever N S with uniform surface brightness. So um, I don't think I'm going to want to image that, but. Uh, I wonder if anybody else has imaged that. So what I'll probably do is I'll head over to Astrobin and I'll uh, sign in and I'm going to search for NGC 1560 and let's see if somebody else has shot this thing. I know Gary M has. Wow. That is a faint. Let's just click on this one. There it is. Now, let's see. They used a 12 inch. And this is what they got. Well, I can already tell you I'm not excited about trying to capture this. Um, and uh, blue. But uh, it's still in the cards. It's a possibility. So let's um, uh, let's uh, head back to our WhatsApp application and let me see if I can. All right. Let's see. Um, we all know M81, M82, uh, M108. I am not uh, familiar with that. I know I've never uh, imaged it. So we're going to head over to Sky Safari. Let's put that in. M108. And... So here we go. That's going to be, that's a little more of a, uh, that's, there's a picture over here I'm looking at. Let's go to Astro Bin. And so we're going to go M. And we'll search. And see what comes up. Hey, now, there's possibilities with the M108. Let's uh, continue, see if we got another. They're using a nine and a half, a nine and a quarter edge. 
that's fairly close to what I'll be using. Uh, now we'll be using a reducer. wonder if they're using a reducer. Probably not. Uh, so he's at 2400 millimeters in that neighborhood and I'll be at 15 so it's going to be half that size and I'm guessing but I like that so that's probably going to be my next target and M108 uh, will be at 36 degrees at 8 o'clock and so I make that note and uh, but again I highly recommend the use of uh, Rick software and uh, appreciate it. it's free uh, just download and install it on your Windows machine and uh, have fun uh, offline uh, looking for uh, some up targets to have some fun with I hope this uh, help somebody and uh, make sure you say something nice to somebody today and uh, we'll catch you again so uh, next time we make a, a YouTube be sure to like and subscribe and it's my understanding you'll be notified uh, if I do another video which I plan to uh, in fact there's another one I plan to do later on today and so you'll just be notified but have a great day guys